We're bleeding money. I maintain four Patreon accounts. Hey gang, the channel is in a bit of a tough spot right now. If you're in a position to help keep this operation afloat, please. The thing is, is that this guy makes so much money on Patreon. So he's got 7,253 paid members on this Patreon. If we say they all subscribed at the lowest level, that's another $14,500 a month. Now this show that he does, this is the second Patreon, so this is completely independent from the first one, make almost $20,000. That doesn't include what he's making on sponsors. It doesn't include anything on AdSense if he gets paid there. I feel like if you're gonna beg for money like this, I feel like we need a lot of transparency. I can't believe these socialist guys live like the most consumerist lifestyle possible. Does he still post on the Supercar channel? This is so funny to me. Excuse us, don't mind us, just coming through. It's just so funny to me. It has to be a meme, this has to be- I think this is all a lie, I think this is a grift. I don't know if he- I think that, um, there's a guy online who does, uh, YouTube content, and he goes by the name Second Thought. He's like a- he's a- I'm sorry, he's not a socialist, this guy's like a tanky. Um, so super anti-American, super anti-capitalist, simps super hard for China, for Hamas, for Russia, just every anti-West thing you can possibly find, he will always be simping for it every time. Um, I can't speak to the entirety of his channel, but every video that I've watched tends to have minimal to no research whatsoever. Um, usually it's just kind of like talking points and then like kind of like headline stats but like not any good analysis, not any factual discussion. It just kind of like goes over propaganda talking points in every video that I've seen. Um, so it's a pretty shitty channel, basically just like I would say anti-Western propaganda, um, all the production and everything. It's all just like B-roll footage. Hey everyone. Oh, okay, so he shoots in a studio sometimes. Um, An attempt to ban TikTok. Signing an executive order stating- Oh, does he have, maybe he has graphics now for his channel now, hold on. BC is using do the app to spy on Americans. We'll get to the hypocrisy of that statement in a bit. But first, let's take a brief look at the history of this attempt to get rid of TikTok. I'm assuming these are his graphics. Okay, so he has graphics now. Good job. Back in 2020, Trump made the first attempt to bonk the app by- Assuming these are his graphics. Okay. So, anyway. New video on my personal channel. I've been going through a rough patch recently. For the first time in years, my operation is losing money. New video on my personal channel. I've been going through a rough patch recently. For the first time in years, my operation is losing money. It can be so easy to tie your self-worth to your financial stability, and that's not healthy. What do we do when we feel like we've failed? I've, I've been having a bit of a challenging time recently. I know a lot of you probably have no idea about my other channels and the big changes I've made over the last few months, and I won't bore you with the details. But long story short, my whole operation is in the red. We're bleeding money. For non-business people like myself... This is the guy that... I think that he was on the thing with the Settler Babies. He's part of that uh, podcast called The Deprogram. ...operation is in the red. We're bleeding money. For non-business people like myself... That means more money is leaving the business than is coming in, and that's not great. Speaking of money, before I get to the rest of the video, let me quickly thank this week's sponsor, Audio. <laughs> it, this has to be intentional. It's got to be a meme. This has to be a meme, right? One of is this the Iranian doctor? No, he's one of the other people on this show. Um, he's the guy that does... He had the other channel that he started like four years ago where they were going to review supercars. Um, but I think he's one of the main three people on this podcast. Him, there's the guy that's the doctor from Iraq. So guys, I want to start today's episode off. <laughs> yeah, and you see the, uh, what's the front of the window? Is windows? he supposed to be you this one? Zimbabwe. Look at my, I don't know what it's called, mm. like the metal, yeah, the metal yeah, yeah, but you can hear him thing. chatting. Yeah, exactly right, you see it there as well. By the and then this is, again, this is a tanky podcast, to be aware. This isn't, it's not center left, it's not far left, like progressives or like Sockdem. This is a tanky podcast, meaning Stalin, Mao, Putin, are like goodish guys, I don't know about Putin, but better than the US, and then everything in the West is evil, horrible, terrible. Um, Hamas is good. Tell us, Hakim, you're the closest, mm. tell us, what the f is going on? Very base things. This will be incredibly hard to do without getting bleed yeah. or getting the stream taken down, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what's it called? Uh, mind my, my words a little bit. Um, <laughs> 
uh, TLDR basically a uh, unexpected operation from a uh, united front of sorts um, from Gaza from Gaza uh, that has uh, launched itself into uh, the neighboring areas um, which of course the entire nation is Palestine but for all intents and purposes right now just to make it more simple they've, they've uh, attacked certain uh, settlements in what is termed now Israel um, and they've made lots of headway. They've made an impressive amount of headway. <laughs> the, the live, uh, the amount of people watching, is, this is the first time we've had such an amount, no? We're up to like 1,450. Hey, nice. Howdy, uh, everybody. I think very that's our, nice. our highest yet. I hate yeah, exactly. all of you motherfuckers. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> it's okay. It's Hassan. You get a kiss Hassan's in chat. No, no. That's why. Oh, is he? Yeah, hey, Hassan. Uh, right. hey, hey, Hassan. what up? Hey, partner. Right, that makes sense. Mohammed Zaman sent five also here much. He says, did the Palestinians actually take civilian hostage or is that fake news? Um, I don't care. Yeah, the occupiers <laughs> are not uh, civilians. That is, that is what it comes yeah. down to. Like if, imagine, French, yeah. like if, if Sorry, uh, Germany, you know, let's say Germany, to, mm -hmm. to be non-controversial, invaded the United States and they, they said, you know what? Cincinnati, Ohio is our ancestral home. And, you know, everyone knows mm -hmm. that's blatantly false, but they, they, take your home they murder your grandma they bulldoze like your neighbor's house are those people mm -hmm. civilians there no they're occupiers and those those are criminals yeah. that, that is there are no mm -hmm. civilians there in the illegal military occupation everything about assad that we've said is a lie um just like very 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 far left illiberal like commie tanky adjacent adjacent or direct shit but yeah in our modern society, it's second nature to equate our financial stability with success or failure. If you're earning more money than you did last year, you're winning. You're a successful person. Oh, this is, he's got like the guitar playing and the, it's sad and... If you're making less, or you lost your job, or your business is just kind of treading water, you're losing. You're a failure. Just about anyone who works a creative job will tell you that the calculus has to be a little different than with a traditional 9-to-5. Most creative work is piecemeal. You're a contractor or a freelancer. There aren't many companies hiring full-time graphic designers or voice actors. But despite the fact that we all understand this, it's still really hard not to feel like a failure when things aren't going your way. I'm guilty of this myself. At time of writing, I just finished looking at the finances with Kelsey, and I immediately started spiraling. I can't keep doing this. How can I possibly solve these problems? I'm a failure. I run this channel, Second Thought, First Thought, and The Deprogram. I write all my scripts. I do all the on-camera stuff for three channels. I coordinate with sponsors for First Thought. I edit every episode of The Deprogram. I do live Q&As on the Second Thought Discord. I maintain four Patreon accounts, manage per- Okay, let's just... Let's just take some notes here, okay? Let's just write a few things down, okay? What you do next is what counts. Take me, for example. Wait, wait, wait. I should be using Obsidian for this. Okay. I run this channel, Second Thought, First Thought, and The Deprogram. I write all my scripts. I do all the on-camera stuff for three channels. I coordinate with sponsors. He said he runs this channel, Second Thought, First Thought, and The Deprogram. He says he writes all of his own scripts. I write all my scripts. I do all the on-camera stuff for That's three channels. All the on-camera stuff. I coordinate stuff. with sponsors for First Thought. I edit every episode of the Deprogram. I do live Q and A's on the Second Thought Discord. I maintain four Patreon accounts. Manage. Uh, edits every uh, episode for the Deprogram. Does live Q and A's on the Discord. Perks and handle problem Q and A's on the Second Thought Discord. I maintain four Patreon accounts, manage perks and handle problems for four hundreds Patreon of patrons. Accounts. I offer video consulting services on the side. Video and consulting still, services. With all that work, with all that work, my business is losing money. That feels like a punch in the gut because I can't fit a single additional piece of work on my plate. Okay, we're gonna go back to this, but holy sh. Okay, where? Where does your money go? If you're doing the, all the work, who the f are you paying for? What, what, are you, what are you spending money on? But we'll get there, we'll get there. I'm at my capacity, and this is on top of trying to be a good husband and father. It's exhausting. And sometimes, like right now with how the money is trending, it's scary. When you're confronted with a reality like this, it's so- Also, keep in mind what we're saying here. My business is in the red with how the money is trending, okay? Um, you can't see my notes, that's fine. You don't have to see them now. We're watching the video. So easy to tie your sense of self-worth to the success of your projects. This is a societal problem, the whole Protestant work ethic thing. If you're struggling financially, it's because of some moral shortcoming. That's deeply ingrained in Western culture, and it's incredibly unhealthy. It also doesn't really apply to 21st century life. I know plenty of people who work even harder than I do who are in a far more precarious position than I am. That's just the nature of work these days. 
it's really hard to make a living, even if you've got the best work ethic in the world. So back to that story I told you. The one where nothing bad happened and the hero just coasted through life. This may just be me, but that sounds like a pretty dull life. Without challenges, without adversity, how do we know what we're capable of? All the best stories follow characters who are in way over their heads. The problems they face drive the story forward, and we watch them learn and grow and become better each time they overcome a setback or a challenge or a failure. These stories are compelling to us because we can all relate to them. There's nothing exciting or fulfilling about a life of extreme leisure and stability, free of challenges and obstacles. Why even exist at that point? Of course, that's not to fetishize a life of overwhelming precarity, either. The extremes of stable luxury and constant hardship are both damaging to what it means to be human. Someone who's never faced a problem has never had the opportunity to grow, to learn, to be introspective about what happened and why. Someone who's constantly having to worry about where their next meal is going to come from won't have the opportunity to let their guard down, process their trauma, and feel proud of how much they've managed to overcome. But for most of us, we're somewhere in the middle. We have a fridge and a TV, but we also have bills and a job that's probably not as secure as we'd like. That's especially true of creative types who have to rely on unpredictable demand for our services and skills. When we have a bad month or our business starts to slump, that's when we have a choice. We can give in to those negative thoughts. Also, I'm kind of curious, and I, maybe I'm overestimating, or I just don't know, what does he live in like a, a house or a really nice condo? Or where does he live? It seems like a decent place. And um, we were at 650. I just finished looking at the fight. This is a whole, I'm guessing this is a house, right? It looks like ground floor house. Finances with Kelsey. Okay, just curious, just curious. Okay, we're gone. We have to rely on unpredictable demand for our services and skills. When we have a bad month or our business starts to slump, that's when we have a choice. We can give in to those negative thoughts. We can shut out the world and just stew in our self-pity and worry. Or we can continue to do the best we can, knowing that sometimes things just don't work out. Maybe there's no salvaging this particular chapter in your story, but you're still alive. You're still living that story. More what happens in the next chapter is up to you. It may not be what you expected. It may be absolutely miserable for a while, but it will also reveal things about you. How many? Okay, look. Got a lot of rooms in this house. I've seen, I feel like I've seen a lot of rooms so far. Just curious, just curious, you know, but go ahead. All that B-roll and background music must cost money now. What, the B-roll? This B-roll is probably free B-roll. When I say B-roll, I don't mean he's shooting it. He's not shooting any of this. None of this is his is his footage. There's probably like a free B-roll site or something you pay a small subscription service and you can use it all. This, he didn't shoot any of this, except for his own stuff, right? Yourself that you may not have realized or that you were able to ignore when times... Oh, or has he rented a whole separate office, actually? That's an office space. Oh, yeah, because the carpets, that's true. Damn. He's wearing Red Wing Iron Rangers. Those are $350 shoes. Is that true? For good. For me. Red Wing Iron Rangers. Was he? Did we see those 100%? Are these? Do we know? That story. What happens in the next chapter is up to you. It may not be what you expected. It may be absolutely miserable for a while, but it... I can't identify shoes by looking at them will also reveal things about yourself that you may not have realized, or that you were able to ignore when times were good. For me, when I'm feeling like a failure, I think to myself, okay, fine, let's imagine everything fell apart. YouTube deleted my channels and I have no way to make money the way I do now. As long as I have my health, my wife, and my daughter, everything else can be fixed. I've worked other jobs before, I can do it again. Bad times show you what really matter. That office shot is definitely downtown Austin. I work in one of the buildings you can see. Huh. And most of the time, it boils down to just existing and being with the people you care about. When we think about failure, we need to cultivate a healthy mindset. We tend to think of failure as a single, permanent thing, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Humans love to compartmentalize, but if you take the long view, failures are just little speed bumps over the course of a lifetime. Think back to something that seemed like the end of the world when you were a kid. Doesn't seem so bad today, does it? The benefit of hindsight will do a lot of heavy lifting. But there's no denying it. Sometimes the right now can suck. The most productive mindset we can have is one of resilience and determination. Our goal should be to build the best life we can for ourselves and our loved ones while realizing- He has expensive taste. All of his shit is super expensive stuff. Nothing isn't high end. I, I, I can't really comment. That might be true, but I can't, I don't know anything about what anything costs here. <laughs> I don't know like the, the, the clothes or the table or anything. I, all, I buy my shit from Ikea or Walmart, so I have no idea. I do think it's funny though. I just point out the, if the shoes are the expensive red wing shoes, I just think it's funny that a lot of these socialist guys seem to have a huge taste for like the very consumerist, like merchandising aspects of capitalism, Hassan included, right? Where they're not just like socialists, they're not just wealthy socialists, but they're like people that fully love all the highly materialist, like basically the worst and most toxic aspects of capitalism. I think that's really fun. When we think about failure, we need to cultivate a healthy mindset. We tend to think of failure as a single permanent thing, but that could be further the macbook yeah the truth humans love but that's part of his work to be fair compartmentalize but if you take the long view failures are just little speed bumps over the course of a lifetime think back to something that seemed like the end of the world when you were a kid 
Like, is this... Do you think that this... The long view. Room. Failures are just little speed... Do you think this is, like, an office? This is just an office that he's got rented? Or do you think this is his house? It must be his house if he's got... Or it must be an office if he's renting long an office, view. right? Failures are just... Or does he shoot in his office speed. and a house? I mean, the carpet looks like it could be office. That's just an office? Okay. This is a nice office. For shooting... For just shooting video? I feel like if I was renting an office space, I would just need, like, one room. No? But also, I don't know what is even available to, to rent. I... Well, I, I looked at it a little bit, but... The drop ceiling, the exit sign. Baseboard is commercial office, 1,000%. Okay. Damn. It bumps over the course of a lifetime. Is office space still cheap right now? Well, how, why would you... Why do you need office space for, even? <laughs> like, what do we... We're just shooting video, no? Why the f*** do we need office space? Once upon a time, there was a spoiled kid from the suburbs who was just clever enough not to have to try very hard in school. Ah, oh, crazy. <laughs> Another rich kid that came from rich parents, uh, rich family, rich zip code. Huh, <laughs> that ended up being a champagne socialist. <laughs> crazy how that works, huh? Spoiled kid from the suburbs who was just clever enough not to have to try very hard in school. He got a scholarship to a little private university and shipped off to another state. Where oh, I went to an out-of-state private school. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. He quickly realized that To be fair, I don't think... In-state private school, he still has to pay tuition. Doesn't matter. There was no one to force him to do his homework or even show up to class. That semester, he earned a 1.67 GPA. He lost his scholarship and he was at risk of getting kicked out. How's that for a failure? Kid starts out with a great trajectory and finds himself on the precipice of completely wrecking it. One more bad grade would have sealed the deal. So what does he do? He doesn't wallow. He has some hard conversations, fixes his perspective, and ends up graduating on time with good grades three years later. At the time, that crushing fear of screwing up so badly that I was about to get kicked out of school felt like the end of- <laughs> the, <laughs> the fucking- the photo album. The photo album. Three years later. At the time, that crushing fear of screwing up so badly that I was about to get kicked out of school felt like the end of the world. But today, 12 years and many failures later, it just looks like a blip on the timeline. Hello friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for a way to support my work and improve your own videos while you're at it, check out my channel sponsor, Audio. You can get your first year of Audio Pro 70% off um, when you use my link in the code Chapman70 at checkout. It's a fantastic cool tool and your subscription directly helps support my work. Um, also, it's funny that if you looked at the... Um, if you looked at the uh, stuff in his past video, the one we clicked here, the real reason the U.S. wants to ban TikTok. Spoiler alert, it's probably just because we don't like China and we're actually super biased against China and freedom and we're just evil, by the way. That's probably what this whole video is about. Um, hey gang, the channel is in a bit of a tough spot right now. If you're in a position to help keep this operation afloat, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Every little bit helps. So he's basically like putting out a sad video of how his shit is failing. He's saying that his like shit is fucked and he can't make any money. But... When you look at like the, hold on, let me see if this tweet is still up. Wait a screenshot of it. Did I open this tweet on stream? Oh, we did, yeah. How is it failing if he, uh, he gets tons of views now? The thing is, is that this guy makes so much fucking money on Patreon. Let me see which of these are public. Um, so to be fair for this Patreon, I don't think we can evaluate anything here because, um, He's got a, I think you get a free thing here. So it's got almost 10,000 members, but you can join for free. So I think the free members might be counted in the 9,719 members here. I think, I think that'd be my guess. But also, why don't we post how much money we make on Patreon anymore, guys? Why did that change if we're socialists and we want to have full transparency and we want to have conversations about how co-ops and all that are so good. Isn't that kind of weird? Um, I also think it's kind of weird that he does this show with two other people called The Deep Program. Now, this show that he does, this is the second Patreon, so this is completely independent from the first one, make almost $20,000. They make almost $20,000 a month between three people? This is independent of any AdSense or any of the other three Patreons he's running as well, right? He has 7,253 paid members. Wait, are you able to check that? How do you know that? Or where do you see that at? Oh, on Grafteon? How, can, this, can this site actually know? Click about, and it shows pay. Oh, oh, holy shit, it does. You're right, my bad. 
the about here does okay so he's got 7253 paid members on this patreon if we say they all subscribe at the lowest level that's another what is that 14,000 about basically 15,000 14,500 dollars a month so we're up to if he gets a third of this just a third even though he said he does all this other work on it just a third of this that's 20,000 a month just between these two Patreons. That doesn't include what he's making on sponsors. It doesn't include anything on AdSense if he gets paid there. And that's it with the minimum, uh, that's with the minimum subscription level on this. If we assume all of them are the minimum subscription levels, like, apparently some people were grilling him in the uh, comment section. How are you losing money if you do all these jobs and have nearly 10,000 patrons? It's a business like any other. Bills, business taxes, office space for the team, employees who are paid well and receive good benefits, it all adds up. Add to this the extreme unreliability of AdSense revenue and viewership, and you've got a very tenuous position. Here is a public challenge. I bet this guy does not have a single other full-time employee besides the three that work on that show. If he does, I'll donate $500 to whatever bullshit he wants me to. I bet this guy does not. And when I say full-time employee, I don't mean somebody you're paying $1,000 a month. I mean one full-time employee, W-2 would be nice, but I won't even say W-2. There is no shot. And it's not his wife. That can't be it either. It can't be your fucking wife. That doesn't count. No shot. Oh, who also received good benefits? No way, bro. It's a business like any other. Bills. What bills does your business have? Your The office, I guess? And then, what, a subscription to Adobe? Business taxes. That's just your ordinary taxes. That's We all pay taxes. That shouldn't matter, though. That's not going to make you operate in the, in the red, because if you're, if you're losing money in your business, if you're not profitable, you're not going to be paying taxes. Office space for the team. What do you have... What team is working for this guy? When he said he does, he runs his channel, Second Thought, First Thought, DD Program. He writes all of his own scripts. He does all of the on-camera stuff for three channels. He coordinates with sponsors. He edits every episode of DD Program. He does live Q&As on Discord. He runs four Patreon accounts and he does video consulting services. What team do you need? You, does, you, do, what, you, you do everything. This is all, you, you do it all. <laughs> what, what are your employees? He doesn't have a single employee. I bet he doesn't even have one. Um, he might pay a few people for thumbnails or whatever, but that's it. I don't think he has a single employee. Oh, no, no. He probably pays the people that do the graphics and video shit on his channel now. That'd be my guess. They're not full-time, though. And there's no way they're receiving good benefits. And that's true. He lives in Texas, so he doesn't even pay state taxes. Um, let me see if I can find this comment. Sorry, man. I do really appreciate all the work you do, and don't take this as some kind of accusation, but could you provide some transparency on where the hardship is coming from? You have over 7,000 backers, even assuming everyone's in the lowest tier, all billed annually instead of monthly for an 8% discount, and minus the Patreon cut of 12%, that would work out to $11,000, take away maybe 4K max per month for editing, unless you're still doing that yourself, that still leaves 7,000 a month before tax, am I underestimating the editing costs, or what channel expenses am I missing? That's not even including the money that he makes in the D program. How is such a huge channel, a valuable channel, not able to remain funded, but Mr. Beast is a millionaire? What is this world? <laughs> I really worry about this channel with what you mentioned in the intro. Oh wait, does he cry in the intro of this too? Hold on. Hey everyone. Before we start the video, I need to make a humble request. I don't have any sponsors left because I'm not willing to compromise my principles on the Palestine issue. AdSense revenue has also fallen off a cliff. <laughs> this operation is officially losing money. And what does that mean? So, he do he's not on Nebula anymore because he didn't want to make a statement condemning Hamas. Okay, so he left Nebula, which was supposed to be cooperatively owned, by the way, funny enough. So he leaves Nebula. I don't know how much money he was getting from there. He, I don't know how many sponsors he ever had, but he still apparently has the audio one at least. And then he's saying that AdSense revenue has fallen off a cliff. He didn't say he got demonetized. Is he just not making as much as he was before? And now he's saying the business is in the red. With, with what? What are your expenses? Like, I'm not saying that... No, I am saying this. I feel like if you're going to beg for money like this, I feel like we need a lot of transparency. If this was like a channel with like 50,000 subs or something, then sure, I could understand it. But like, I feel like we need way more transparency here to, to beg like this for a guy that looks like he's living his best millionaire life. <laughs> Revenue has also fallen off a cliff. 
This operation is officially losing money, and that's not sustainable. If you appreciate the work we're doing here and you're in a position to help, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Every patron, regardless of pledge amount, gets early access to every video, plus access to our patrons only Discord. We've got everything from a book club, to educators ready to answer questions, to live Q&As with me every month. Oh, that's not if you're able to chip in even a dollar a month, I would greatly appreciate your support. Even a dollar a month. Hope you enjoy month. the episode. Just a dollar a month, guys. Please. <laughs> My god. Does he still post on the Supercard channel, or did he stop the posting on that? It's been years since he uploaded to the Supercard channel? Okay. Unreal. I can't believe these socialist guys live like the most consumerist lifestyle possible. That's just so f***ing funny to me, bro. This is so funny to me. Excuse guys, don't mind us. Just coming through. Just coming through in a $160,000 car that's more expensive than most house. Illuminator, thanks for the five gifted subs. Bizarre. It's wild. It's just so funny to me. It has to be a meme. This has to be intentional. I actually really like Second Thought. I like this guy because he's like saying, how f***ing stupid can socialist dipshits actually be? There's no shot they would fall for this one, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen. What's the car saying? Car is lowering suspension. Nice. <laughs> if you can't tell by the fancy uh, lowering suspension automatically and the loud noises coming from behind us, we are in a very fast and expensive car today. And we are in a McLaren 570S. Like, really? Of all the things, of all the hobbies. God. Do they actually review the car at all or talk about the car at all? Or is it just like, wow, go zoom. This is one of the prettiest. <laughs> the engine compartment back oh behind us uh, is completely open. It's okay. totally see-through. It just has like a mesh cage yeah. okay. over it. So you can see your really cool twin turbo V8, mm. 570 horsepower Oh, engine. so that's why they named it the that's 570. Why, and it's 570 metric horsepower. So it's actually 563? So American horsepower, like where do they put the U in horsepower in Britain? Is it H O U R S E? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I assume they spell it like that. <laughs> British people, <laughs> stop um, putting U's in words. This weighs just a little over 3,000 pounds. It weighs like 1,700 kilograms, I believe. It's like 1,700 kilograms, a little over three. I don't know if there's a troll comment, but I'll I'll answer it anyway. How is he different from you moving to Florida to pay less taxes while advocating for more tax laws? Can't someone advocate for socialism while living a rich life personally? Uh, I don't advocate for the glorious moral goodness of giving your money to the government. I've never done that in my entire life. These guys say that capitalism is intrinsically evil. Uh, but it's interesting that while living in a capitalist society, they are participating in the most toxic aspects of capitalism, which is consumerism. If you had to defend it, how would you? I don't know why. Why would I have to defend? I could. I mean, I could defend anything if you really want me to. Um, if you could defend it, how would you? Um, if you could defend it, how would you? I would defend it from. I would. I would use two angles to defend it. Um, I would say one. Uh, I would lie, and I would say the cars are donated to the channel. The time that we have with the cars is uh, given to us by somebody else. Um, they are big supporters of the channel. They support our movement. They support our cause. So it's not like we're spending a ton of money to rent them. Uh, so the cars are basically the time that we've got in here is done at no charge. And then secondly, uh, if you're trying to draw people into whatever ideological movement you've got that's away from capitalism, right? Like if you're a far left movement and you're trying to draw in the most capitalistic people possible, what better way to do that than with supercars? So if I can do a car channel where the cars are actually donated to free for the channel, for free to the channel, so I don't have to pay for them, and I can get people to start watching the show who are hardcore capitalists, it gives me like the newest base of viewers to convert in, uh, to like my more socialist beliefs. Hopefully once they check out the car channel, they'll also hop over to my other channel and then they can get woke on capitalist shit. I don't know, so that would probably be the way I would do it. Ah! <laughs> that is so fast! Oh my God. You think it's gonna stop and then it doesn't. And then it just doesn't. It just keeps yeah. pulling. Wow. So we were in third that whole time, third, I believe. That whole time. That's a it nice third. Up to the what is it? Do, do they even... 
Is it just them driving it around and like, God, why do I feel like this shirt costs 500 bucks? I'm getting Neiman's vibes or whatever from this. It's probably not, it's probably like a 20 dollars shirt. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking okay. All right. A true socialist vehicle. R. McLaren is looking really good, comrades. Hello, comrade. I, too, would like a Lambo. Your Lambo? Our Lambo. They probably don't know anything about cars. Yeah, but I feel like if you're going to do a car review channel, I feel like you would at least, like, look shit up to, like, rattle off some stats or something or rattle off some history. The McLaren 570S is the most recent car in a long line of engineering trying to improve on the original model of some bullshit made in 1972 and here they drop this i don't know you just like read shit and you fucking regurgitate it no next section of the video yeah i doubt it okay i guess it kind of matches with how they do the socialist shit too right they don't actually know anything about the car or have any appreciation for the car or can like convey any real or cool facts about the car they just think it looks cool it's like an aesthetic, I guess. The car shit and the socialist shit. Thirty thousand dollars. I mean, that's, if, it's, that's Nissan GTR territory. Yeah, I mean, new Nissan GTR. Yeah, of course, new Nissan GTR territory. But still, when you yeah. get a brand new Nissan GTR or a used McLaren 570S, I'd probably get the McLaren. I think having yeah. not having driven the GTR, I would get a supercar. Bro, if I was riding around a car like this and I scraped the bottom, I would kill myself. I just can't. It just feels gross. I'm not at a point yet. If I was worth ten million, if I get a supercar, it's because I'm worth ten million. That's how you'll know. Okay. Once I have a 10 million net worth, I'll buy a $200,000 car. Otherwise, that. I feel sick scraping the bumper on my RS. Okay. I just feel like I have no clearance on anything. Like every time you come out of parking lots, you gotta go to corner and shit because you're, it's just that. I would feel gross. I would hate myself doing it. Yeah, the McLaren, I think. But we'll see if that is the case because the Ferrari I really disliked because of some of its supercar quirks. Yeah. And, I, and I'm starting to get the sense that this is gonna do some of the same stuff. We live in Texas. Today yeah. it's like 85 degrees outside. So pretty it's warm. warm. Um, I'm boiling in here. Too. I'm sweating so it's, much. The AC is not super ideal. And funny enough, okay, so the track spec versions of these, like the LT models, yeah. you can actually delete the air conditioning in the cars to save weight. Wow. I mean, yeah, good for a track day. But man, if you're gonna <laughs> buy this car and live in Texas, you gotta or, have the air conditioning. Just anywhere in the South. Need air conditioning in Texas. Good catch. Probably the worst infotainment in any car I've ever driven. Yeah, this is trash. This is trash. It's awful. It's like worse than even like a thirty thousand dollar Prius. Oh, yeah. Okay, 20, we're getting a okay. We're getting a review of the. This is instrument cluster. Would you call this a control panel? I don't know what you would call this. The center console shit or whatever. Do you think this channel makes more than you? It doesn't matter. This kid's family is probably worth more than my entire lineage will ever be for the rest of existence. <laughs> What other reason would there be for a socialist to record himself driving expensive cars if they didn't have at least some interest in the cars? It's really a dumb move for him, isn't it? Well, I mean, cars are cool. I mean, it's exp and they're expensive cars, so I guess it's cool. So, I guess, yeah. A minute later, you the, the air conditioning knob starts going it's, up, 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 up. It's, it's just wow, laggy. I that a minute ago. Yeah, it's laggy. It's really just, uh, yeah. it's just really, really poor. It doesn't have a glove box. <laughs> it is absurd how little storage you get in this thing. It's so comical, the amount of storage. Okay, so just for reference, you have no glove box, okay? You have this tiny little net right <laughs> here to like, I guess, do something with. I assume these are cup holders, but those would fit no American size. Cups. And they would fall right over. You'll spend $10,000 to spite a socialist on Twitter, but you won't spend 200000 on a car you know you would enjoy. Uh, the, um... I, that was not to spite anybody. I support the Atlanta police, okay? And I wanted them to use that money to fight crime. It is laughable. It is a compartment? Wait, are you supposed to put stuff in here? Just like, like why would they even put that there? You can access the uh, the washer fluid oh, and, and stuff. Okay. And some of the engine, like engine fluid, I think you can access it from there. That makes more sense. You can use a screwdriver to unscrew the uh, engine compartment and take it off and look at your engine if you want to see more. But you do need the process. Yeah. You do need to unscrew it, which we're not going to do that either. No. And uh, there is another button where you can access the front, which is actually quite deep. Yeah. And you could probably fit like I don't know a couple backpacks in there. That's useful. I mean, this is like, not a road trip car, so you're not going to no. need. You're not going to need to haul much. All right. What do you think of the visibility? Um. <laughs> It's a little butts. It's not super good. Yeah, it's it's not terrible. I've, I've been in supercars that are worse, like the Lotus Evora. Yeah. For example, definitely has. It's the same with Sneeko and probably even people like Lauren Southern with the trad working class, but not actually shit. The whole thing is, is aesthetics. I feel like um, for Sneeko, yeah. I feel like Lauren went and did her documentaries and shit, though. I don't think I've ever seen Lauren like front weird random aesthetic shit before. Unless shooting flares at immigrants is an aesthetic. Not super good. Yeah, it's it's not terrible. I've, I've been in supercars that are worse, like the Lotus Evora. Yeah. For example, definitely. Do you think he's overspending on the channel, sets, equipment, editors, etc., on himself, or he's just lying and wants more money? I think he's just lying and wants more money. He probably they're probably having a dip in subs. They're just trying to like, maybe they see. I don't know how smart any of these guys are when it comes to looking at internet trends, but the writing is on the wall for the online like Zoomer socialist progressive shit. Maybe they see it and they're just trying to milk a little bit out before they 
lately? I don't know. Really has worse visibility than this does. I would say so too, yes. One thing I will say about the paddle shifters though that I don't like is they are attached to the wheel and they not are. the steering column. They are. Which means they go around with the wheel, so your hands are going to be in weird positions. I don't like because in Ferraris and Lamborghinis, they are on the uh, on the steering column. Yep. Like the Ferrari, we. Is that? Wouldn't you want pa paddles on the wheel? If you're turning and changing gears, wouldn't you want them on the wheel or do you not? I don't like paddles at all, but I feel like I'd. I feel like you'd want them on the. But if, I guess if you grip them accidentally, maybe it would fuck you up. I don't know. It drove, it was on the steering column, so you turn the wheel and the, the paddles were still in place. So that would be my the, first knock. Easily. That is a knock that I have against this, because yep. I don't like that. Yeah. What else are we talking about? Okay, um, one thing to get out of the way, gas mileage. I have no idea, who cares? Who cares? I don't even know what it is, I need to look it it's up. It's 16 and 23, no one cares, but... <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, Just so you it's know. 16 and 23. All right, big brain time. Would you get this, or a Lamborghini Urus? This. <laughs> Definitely, this over an Urus. Yeah. What do you think? Because I know you're like such a fan of I Normally, paddle shifters are attached to the wheel. You don't want them on the column in case of a misshift. Okay. Love the Urus because it's just practical enough where you can be like, it's just like, yeah, it's, take it. Okay, so the Urus is pretty much as fast as this. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. This 062.9 seconds. Urus is like 3.3. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, actually, maybe because if you're if you're steering the wheel like heavily, your paddles could get lost maybe. But are you steering that much and shifting at the same time? I don't know. Do you have Obsidian Sync? Yes. Do you pay monthly or annual? Probably annual. Not that much difference. But the Urus, you can fit like four people That's in the thing. It I want to go out and have fun with my friends. <laughs> or my dogs, you know. Yeah, you um, throw your dog and your friends yeah. in. And, it's, and you get to know the engine noise as well as all the crazy interior and stuff. And people are more prone to like laugh at it because it's absurd it's versus this. You're like, ugh, that guy. And it's about the same price brand new as this. Yeah. Also, the Urus is like, it's like two hundred, two hundred twenty thousand dollars brand new. You can get, again, like there are multiple examples of this right now on Auto Trader for 130 140 150 Yeah. That Just price. <laughs> That's more enticing. Still a lot yeah. of money. Still a lot of money, and I think it's still depreciating. Yeah. I think eventually this is going to be a big, big bargain yeah. of a car. Like, big I think eventually bargain. it's going to get into the low hundreds. Absolutely. Because um, I think this car will always be pretty. Like, this will yes. always be considered a good looking car. Yeah. Wow. So even if you were to buy this, if it dropped to like 90,000, 80,000, you could keep this in your garage for 15 years and people would be like, wow, that's still a nice yeah. car. I, I agree with that a lot. I still think the Ferrari is overall a better car than this, though. I think the Ferrari 48 is better than the 570. If you gave me the money to buy a Ferrari. Yeah, that's the thing. This, I would buy this and then a bunch of other stuff. You can buy this for so much less. Yeah, yeah and have to You meant buy this and then donate to mutual aid guys. Just as much fun. Yeah. Probably more, because I really, I didn't have that much fun in Ferrari. Honestly, I know that's blasphemy. That's like totally just mind blowing to me, honestly. The Ferrari's not, obviously not a bad car. It's objectively a great car, but this one for me checks more boxes. What do you guys think? Am I right or is JT right? Am I right Spoiler. or is Joe wrong? Spoiler, I'm right. <laughs> no, you shall see, I will be vindicated in the comments just like last no, time. No, 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 no. Just no. like last time. Why are we still watching? I just want to see how it ends. So, what do you think the performance score should be on this? Oh man, this thing is killer. This is the, it's called the Baby McLaren. Yeah. Okay, so there's the 720S. Yeah. There's the Senna. There's the P1. There's yeah. the stuff that definitely performs better than this. So I don't think a 10 is reasonable. No, I, I would agree with that. But I am, I think, going to give it a 9. I was going to give How many of the socialists slash woke left do you think secretly want a second Trump admin for the gain in view slash subs? Um, for the socialist tanky people, I don't think it matters much to them because they'll rail on either administration, so... A nine also. It, it, it just deserves a nine. It's <laughs> stellar. Practicality. <laughs> it's a joke. You know, you have a glove box in this. And the, uh, the cup holders, like, you can fit cups in them. No, like, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. You can fit one single junior cheeseburger. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Maybe. maybe if you, and you okay, I'm bored now. Oh, this was the comment. Sorry, man, I do appreciate all the work. Uh, don't take this some kind of accusation, but could you provide some transparency on where the hardship is coming from? Yeah. Does anybody respond to him? While I trust the channel enough not to worry too much about this, and I wonder if that 7K figure includes folks who've joined for free, I do, include, I do agree that transparency would be a good thing to have. At FSP, I'm not sure. Equipment... I'm not sure about tax in his country as well, but he isn't making much from YouTube itself, that's for sure. Plus, he has a family of support. 7K is really good money, but I imagine the leftover isn't excessive with the expenses that he has. Also, another thing that I'm kind of curious about, I wonder if people like, I don't think Vosh would have this problem, but I wonder if people like Hassan have kind of f themselves in the uh, election review season. I guess we'll see as the election rolls on. I wonder if they've kind of themselves in viewership because they've primed their viewers to have no uh investment in the outcome of the election like if you think that democrats and republicans are basically the same and then the election is coming it's still going to be a spectacle and people are going to want to know but i wonder if the the feeling of being not as invested with the audience i wonder if that is going to impact like people being willing to watch as much i don't know is there a way to send you money via crypto bro hold on we got another thing his office is three months old. 
oh, so he just started a new channel. Maybe it didn't pick up as many subs as he thought it would, and now he's losing money on it on just this channel? Is that what's happening? Over the past decade or so, I've shot everything from YouTube videos to wildlife to a car show to feature-length documentaries. Before that, I worked in camera sales and have owned or shot just about every brand under the sun. My name is JT, and this was my old office. Every piece to camera I ever shot was in this tiny room. I run two YouTube channels, three if you count this one, and a very successful podcast. Now I want to share what I've learned over the past 10 years of doing this stuff professionally and help people who want to work creatively but don't know where to start. This little office was great, but it's not quite cutting it anymore. And if you can't tell from how bare this room is and the title of the video, it's time to upgrade to something a little better. Oh no. Oh god. Are you writing up a sub stack about this? No. It'd be funny though for somebody to turkey time to get on. I don't think anybody cares that much, but... Jesus. For the past four years, all my creative work has been confined to a 10 by 10 converted bedroom. For most of that time, it was perfect. I could work from home, everything I needed was like 10 seconds down the hall, I could have lunch with my wife, it was great. But as the main channel grew and we started trying to do more creative things with it, we ran into some problems pretty quickly. Tripping over light stands and tripods, trying to squeeze multiple sets into one tiny room, just wasn't cutting it anymore. So I started looking for office space, and all these fancy YouTube channels make it look so easy to find the perfect studio. It was not easy. Everything was either crazy expensive, or a tin shed with no roof, or oh actually you can't do video work here. Anyway, we finally found this- Any thoughts on the Iran-Israel news today? Nope. Good luck. Base. It's about 900 square feet, so there's plenty of room for multiple Is set. that a fake city skyline in his background? Uh, that's my guess, is it's fake, right? Yes. Right now we've got three or four operational, with a few others planned for later. Actually, let me- let me show you. Damn. Okay, how can you do like this and then be like, guys, I'm broke three months later? How could you do like a pimp my studio? Oh, wait, this is real. Wait, is it real? This is real. Oh, you. No, wait, am I getting mind fucked right now? It's three screens. Oh. Why not just get like a carpet on the wall or whatever? Or what do they do for like the late shows? Okay, damn, Jesus. Wait, how much does this cost? Oh, it's probably just, it's just gonna be three monocles, uh, monocles. It's three monitors turned vertical. I wonder if they're like special monitors you buy for their server. It's just ordinary, whatever bullshit. All right, this is the office. Here we have the fake TV set. This is where I was just sitting. If you come over and look at these TVs actually, you'll notice that there's a big old gap between them. These things aren't even lined up, but on camera, you can't even really tell from all the way over here. It looks perfectly fine. On uh, this setup, we've got the OG Second Thought set, which I just run off of my MacBook over here. Uh, ignore the, the mouse and keyboard going off to the wrong side. That is currently powering the TV wall. Nice little box there. And then behind me, we have the obligatory gear wall that every YouTuber must have contractually obligated. Got a bunch of cameras that I've collected over the years, including this tiny little guy. Um, lenses, rig pieces, a bunch of storage, a drone, that sort of thing. And then over here, we've got a big blank wall that we need to do something with. I'm thinking we're probably gonna make this like a like a fake living room set. We'll have another C-stand here, big drape to act as a, a softbox for the window, um, chair, lamp, all that kitschy stuff. And then over here, we've got our editing bay set. We haven't used this one in any of the, the first or second thought videos yet. What is little bro editing over here? Is this a whole other Mac setup? And then there's another PC? What are we working on in here? I feel like every single thing he works on can be done from like one computer in a bedroom, except for having like the sets is nice, but like what all are we working on here? 
probably you know put some plants up there, make it a little more aesthetic. But this is where our brilliant creative director Andrew does his magic. This is where I sit and eh, less magic. But that that's what we've got going so far. We've got some some blank spaces to work with. It's coming together. It's the employee goon cave. They're all one thousand dollar plus Herman Miller chairs. I mean, the set looks nice. I'll give them that. I just think it's funny to build this and then three months later, you're like, we're in the red, guys. He's working on a revolution, dumbass. Okay, people said that this is all expensive stuff. This isn't, right? This is just like a, this is like an $800 Ikea couch or some shit, right? You think? Like, none of these tables look... Well, this might be a standing desk. I can't tell. This shit is sometimes. But even so, it's not like... So, that's all for this video. Didn't want to do anything too fancy, just wanted to introduce you to the new channel and give you a little behind-the-scenes look at where we'll be producing our content for Second Thought, First Thought, The D Program, and now this new channel. I, I, honestly, I don't know why I do this to myself. Every time I find a way to take some work off my plate, I'm like, sick, now I can start a new project. The curse of being a creative type, I guess. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in learning about the nuts and bolts of YouTube or podcasting or creative work in general, maybe hit that little subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified every time we upload. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> what if you're boring? <laughs> God damn it. Society, especially in the suburbs, is centered around consumption, and when all that feel when spend twenty thousand dollars on new office, and film footage at a gas station, and in my car. Wait a second, he's reusing that. He's reusing this footage. We saw this in the Afraid to Fail video. Have public transportation. What?